Think you need expensive analog gear to get that warm tone? Think again. These free tools in Logic can help turn a cold mix into something warmer. I'm going to show you a dead simple chain, a plug in combo that sounds shockingly analog, plus an AB comparison at the end so you can actually hear the difference. But first, what do I actually mean by analog sound? Well, it's like a digital photo versus film photo. Digital is clear and precise. Film adds vibe and texture. It feels more alive. That's what I mean by analog sound. Warm, saturated, beautifully imperfect. Think like tape machines, tube preamps, and old school mixers. Like back in the 60s, that was the only sound. Clean wasn't even on the menu. And honestly, sometimes that grit that you get is what makes it magic. So how can you create this analog sound? Well, this shouldn't be a surprise to you, so I'm just gonna say it and move on. If you want amazing analog audio, like the records you hear from the 60s or the 70s, then you actually have to do it the same way. That means going and spending like a lot of money on analog equipment. There's really no other way if you want to do it 100% similar. But we can get pretty darn close with modern plugins. So let's do it. Okay, so step one, we need to try best to emulate the signal chain here. So start with your, your microphone, actually where it, it begins. So you can get emulators like the Slate mic, which can emulate tube mics like the Neumann U47 and many other analog uh, mics that have actual tubes in them. You know, the Slate mic might be around like 400, 500 bucks. If that's not an option, you're, you'll just settle for what you have. Okay, so step number two, is now you want to try to emulate the sound on the way into Logic. This is kind of like how the sound was affected on the way into a preamp, like the old analog Neve 1073. Let's get that done now by using some very soft saturation with Logic's overdrive or the fat effects distortion. So out of the box, like the Logic's overdrive plugin can is actually quite aggressive. So we don't want to push it hard. We want to be very, very subtle here. We're stuck in some kind of spinning wheel. We hardly ever go out. I miss the ways where the music played. You can also use some free plugins like the soft tube saturation knob or the analog obsession pre box. So Analog preamps and what you would see back in the day, they added like a bit of subtle harmonic distortion or, or saturation. And in Logic, just a bit of tiny overdrive on a channel like this can simulate that character. UAD, which is the interface I use and I use all the other plugins, they also model the Neve plugins like the 1073 or maybe the 1081. So if you have the budget, you can definitely try those paid plugins as well. Okay, now for step three, we can emulate any outboard gear that might have been used, maybe like a compressor, like a Fairchild compressor, or even a reverb plate like the EMT-140. Actually, we can get a free EMT response file online and use it in Logic's Space Designer to actually emulate the sound of the analog EMT-140 reverb. I'm going to show you how to do that in one second, but first let's add the vintage tube EQ in Logic, and then we'll add the, the reverb. So we want to keep it subtle here. I mean, try adding a little bit of drive or maybe some small EQ, you're going to have to adjust this based on your own taste and style with regards to the, the song. We're stuck in some kind of spinning wheel. We hardly ever go out. I miss the ways where the music played. Nothing compared to the sound. Dancing in the open all night. You, me, and a cherry sky burn bright. Tuning out the troubles of life You, me, and a stereo on fire We're stuck in some kind of spinning wheel We hardly ever go out so for the reverb, first you got to download a WAV file of an actual EMT-140 response. Cheers to Gray Hopkins. I've never met them, but they they have this online for free. So I'll leave a link in the description. It's just a WAV file of the response that you need. It's kind of like the fingerprint of the real hardware. So thanks, Greg. Now on my uh, guitar track or any audio track you have here, set it up with an aux track. So send your track to an aux track. And then in the Space Designer Reverb plugin, go to load IR sample and then bring in that EMT 140 file. Boom. Now it's like the guitar or any audio you have here is running through that vintage plate reverb. We're stuck in some kind of spinning wheel. 
We hardly ever go out. So from here, I can adjust things like the wet level, decay time, and add some EQ to shape the sound even more. So for me in this song here, I'll probably like keep it to a, a short reverb, maybe around one, two seconds, and I'll add a bit of pre-delay and some EQ just so it doesn't muddy things up. Okay, step four is we actually need to try to emulate the console. So these are the big desks you see in old studios. And these desks, they were full of electronics and like electrical circuits, what I mean, and tubes that add character and shape the sound on the way in. So we have to try to emulate that now. So we can try doing that in Logic. We'll use the vintage console EQ, which I think is loosely inspired by a Neve desk, though Apple has never really specified that exactly. It's just talk online. Besides that, we can also add some subtle compression using the vintage VCA plugin or the vintage FET. Let's do slow attack, fast release, keeping things subtle here, just adding slight character. Again, you will have to adjust this based on the song you're working with. I miss the ways where the music played. Okay, so step five is now we actually wanna emulate the sound running through a tape machine where things were actually recorded on. Let's try to hack our way there by using Logic's tape delay, like a with zero feedback, maybe a small amount of wetness. And we can have the filtering set to on. It's not really a true emulation, but we're trying to hack our way there and, and make something work with, with what we have for free in Logic. Or besides that, you can use free plugins like the Chow tape model or the Isotope vinyl for just maybe like a lo-fi analog crackle. For a paid option, you could use like the popular J37 plugin that was in Abbey Rhodes, not the plugin, the actual hardware unit that you hear on tons of Beatles records. When you record to tape, you're adding subtle compression, roundness, and a gentle roll off in the highs. It's kind of like putting your mix through warm butter. So let's take our chain now and apply it to all our tracks in the session here, trying to emulate that each track was recorded like through this before and ended up in Logic to emulate that uh, analog chain. But maybe not everyone is the same, right? Because maybe not every track we wanted to have EQ or, or that reverb, but in general, having them all pretty similar. So now once we do that, we're gonna take step six, which is doing some final mix bus processing. And then we're gonna bounce this all down to a final track, trying to emulate the sound of printing all the tracks down to, to tape. So let's do some more compression with the vintage VCA. Not a lot, like, because we've added so many plugins, very, very subtle things that are just trying to add subtle amounts of warmth and character. You could also add some subtle stereo spreading to emulate analog widening too. So let's take that and bounce it down to, to audio now and do our comparison. Okay, so let's take the song and let's say I recorded everything clean. So super digital, super clean, precise. Here's what that sounds like. Stuck in some kind of spinning wheel We hardly ever go out I miss the ways where the music plays Nothing compared to the sound Now, the entire analog emulation, same song. Here's what that sounds like. Stuck in some kind of spinning wheel We hardly ever go out I miss the ways where the music plays Nothing compared to the sound It's not to say that one is bad. There's a time and place for both. So whether it's digital or analog, the biggest thing you can do for your music is actually just to focus on creating great sounding songs and productions right from the start. And this really means great recordings, whether it's analog or digital. So if you wanna learn this, watch this video here, and I'll teach you how to produce a song from the ground up and everything in between, right here in Logic Pro. So I'll see you there.